math time. Good day, everyone. Today we're going to talk about theorems on rhombus. So let's start with the theorem number one. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. So right here we have an illustration. We have a rhombus and E S W. All right. So right here we have segment N S and segment E W. These are the diagonals. So in here we have segment N S is perpendicular to segment E W or diagonal N S is perpendicular to diagonal E W. So therefore, if that would be the case, we could have the right angles. Okay, so we can form right angle here and that way. And also, we could have this angle here. So what are these angles? So you have angle and T. By the way, we, we used to have T as their point of intersection. So we have here angle N, T, W. So this angle here. Next up, we have angle N, T, E. So the angle over here. Next, we have angle S, T, E. So the angle here. And lastly, we have this angle here, angle S, T, W. Okay, let's move on to the theorem number two, stating that each diagonal of a rhombus bisects opposite angles. Okay, now let's take a look with this illustration. So as you can see, this segment NC and segment EA rather, IE rather, okay, you have there, these are the diagonals. So from here, let's assume that we have here segment IE. So from here, if segment IE is diagonal of rhombus nice, therefore we could say that angle 1, as being illustrated here, is congruent to angle 2. So when you say bisect, that means it is being divided into two equal parts. So this angle N, I, C is being cut or divided into two equal parts. Wherein we could say therefore that angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent. Same thing when we have this angle E here. So we have angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Same thing if we have, if segment NC is our diagonal of rhombus nice, then we could have angle, a measure of angle I and C is congruent to angle E and C. And so with, you have here angle C being divided into two equal parts. So therefore, we could have angle I CN is congruent to angle ECN. Is that clear? Now let us have some application. So let's take a look with this rhombus. We have here in the given rhombus below, we have GEOM or GEOM as indicated as angle 1, angle 2, angle 7, angle 8. 4, 3, 6, 5. These are the angles. And the intersection of our diagonals EM and GO is point S. Okay? So let's have first problem. If measure of angle SGM is 40 degrees, find the measure of each angle. So where is that angle SGM? So here. S G M. So that means that is also named as angle 6. If that angle 6 is 40 degrees, we are asked to find what the measure of angle 5, 1, 2, and the rest of the other angles. Okay? 
So right here, knowing from the theorems that this angle here, if this would be our uh, diagonal of a rhombus, GO, uh, G or other, uh, we could say that the measure of angle E, G, M will be equivalent of 80. Okay, 80 degrees. Since this angle 6 here is 40. So meaning to say, the measure of angle 5 will be also equal to 40 degrees. So to find that one, right here, as, I, as I've said a while back, that the measure of angle SGM is 40, then we could say that angle EGM is also equal to 80 degrees. To answer our questions, we have therefore, again, measure of angle 6 is equal to 40 degrees, or you could have name as measure of angle SGM. So the measure of angle 5, that's very clear, that will also be equal to 40 degrees. Or we could call that angle as SGE. Alright? Again, next we have angle 7 opposite to this angle here. We have angle O. So we have angle 7 and angle 8. We have to know them. Oh, we have to know the measures of these angles also. Okay, that would also be equal to 40 degrees. That is named as angle S O. E. And the next one, we have measure of angle 8, will also be equal to 40 degrees. That could be also named as angle SOM. Now our problem next is, how about the measure of angle 1 and 2? And so with 3 and 4. Okay? So remember that this angle here is 80 degrees. This would also be equal to 80 degrees. And we are looking for the measure of this angle 1 and angle 2. If you could still remember the, um, uh, the property of a parallelogram, that consecutive angles are supplementary. So to supplement the measure of angle 5 and 6, so we have to know uh, the measure of angle 1 and 2. Since this is 80 degrees, so therefore to make it a supplement measure, that would also give us 100 degrees. Alright, so 180 minus 80, that would give you 100. So that would be the measure of this angle here. So from there, since knowing that this segment EM is our diagonal, it bisects the angle into two equal parts. So meaning the measure of angle 1 therefore is 50 degrees from 100. Okay. So that could well is also name as angle 1 is named as angle S E G. And angle 2 will also be equal to 50 degrees. That is named as angle S E O. And so with angle 3 is very clear, opposite to that one. That is 50 degrees or angle S M G. And lastly, we have angle 4. That would also be equal to 50 degrees. Okay, so I think that is very, very clear. Alright, so let's move on to the next problem. Okay, so we have if segment GE. Where is GE? Alright, so this one, GE, the side of our rhombus, is equal to 5 centimeter. And EM... This one, our diagonal, is equal to 6 centimeter. And GO, this one, oh, this next diagonal, is equal to 8 centimeter. And we are asked to find the perimeter of triangle EOM. So when you say perimeter, what does it mean? So that means per meter, so meaning all the sides of our triangle eom where is triangle eom we have e o m so this triangle here we are looking for the perimeter of this triangle okay so from the given that ge is five so meaning all the sides of our rhombus are congruent so segment eo will give us the measure of five centimeter is that clear then we have here segment EM is 6 centimeter. So 
That's very clear. So therefore, as our solution, we have segment EO plus segment EM plus segment OM. So knowing that these four sides in here are congruent since we're talking about a rhombus. Okay, so from the given that that is 5 centimeters, so therefore this would also be equal to 5 centimeters. So as we substitute for the perimeter of triangle EOM, you have 5 centimeter plus 6 centimeter plus another 5 centimeter. And that will give us an equivalent of 16 centimeter. So meaning to say, our perimeter of this triangle EOM, this one, is equal to 16 centimeter. Is that clear? Okay. Let's move on to the next problem. We have here perimeter of triangle. Okay. So perimeter of triangle E uh, GSM. Where is GSM? GSM. So meaning this small triangle here. Okay. GSM. So from the given that this side here is equal to 5 and the length of segment em is 6 so therefore this will be equal to 3 so to find this uh, the solution you have triangle gsm is equal to segment gs this one plus the segment gm this one and lastly segment sm Okay, so from here, this is 5 centimeter. This will be equal to 3. And this side in here is, how long is GO? That is 8. So half of it is 4. So therefore, this means, uh, this means that GS is equal to 4 centimeter. So let's substitute. You have segment GS is 4 centimeter plus 5 centimeter as segment GM plus segment SM equals 3 centimeter. So combining them together, you would have their perimeter of triangle GSM is equal to 12 centimeter. Exactly. All right. Let's move on to the next problem. Let's have problem number three. If segment EM right here is equal to 6 meters and segment SO is equal to 4 meters how long is segment GM okay this one so how long is this segment from the given that segment EM this part in here this diagonal is 6 so therefore if that is 6 this means that segment SM is equal to 3 and segment SO is 4. So meaning this side in here is also equal to 4 meters. And what is asked is how long is segment GM. So we are referring to this triangle here. Okay, again and again that this segment EM and segment GO are perpendicular to each other. So meaning there is a right angle form here. So if we're going to redraw, we have triangle GSM all right so from there you have that would be four meters next we have segment SM therefore is three meters and we are looking for segment GM so remember the uh, Pythagorean theorem okay so for the Pythagorean theorem it states that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two legs. So in this illustration, since this angle here is right angle, we can apply the uh, theorem for the Pythagorean. All right. So opposite to our right angle is named as our hypotenuse. So therefore, these two sides in here in, in this triangle are the legs of our right triangle so it's very easy since the hypotenuse is our unknown 
So to solve, we have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So if we're going to make use of the segments in our illustration here, we have segment gm squared is equal to segment sm squared plus segment gs squared. Okay, as we substitute the measures of each side, you would have segment GM is equal to 3 at the square root of 3 square plus 4 square. Okay, so we used to have the square root on the other side since we, take, uh, we took the square root on this side in here. So, uh, I just uh, take the square root directly. Anyways... It's okay so you have here 3 square plus 4 square so the square of 3 square would give us 9 and we have 4 square is equal to 16 so what is 9 plus 16 that will give us 25 so therefore you would have segment gm is equal to the square root of 25 but we are not going to stop it there what is the square root of 25 definitely will give us 5 meters so that means to say that the length of this segment is equal to five meters understood so this is five meters if that is five meters if you will be next asked uh, what is how long is segment ge that will also give us five meters and so with segment eo and om okay so, thank you so much for listening. Remember, theorems on Roombus. God bless everyone.